Good afternoon. For those of you who don't know, my name is Maya Karen. I run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature luxury, contemporary, and how to style and now natural hair care. So if you are into any of those things, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the notification bell. That way you will never miss a video. So today's video, we are going to start talking about trends for 2022. I have been looking at runway shows. I have been on the website scouring just kind of to, just kind of to see what is very popular, what's trending. So today we are going to go over nine, I won't say worse, let's say nine trends that I will not be participating in and then 10 that I will. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first, you know, I guess everybody likes to do disclaimers in the beginning of these videos. So the nine trends to me, again, this is my opinion, that I feel are the worst or the ones that I will not be participating in is simply that. It's an opinion. They don't fit with my style. They don't fit with my aesthetic. And I don't really think that some of these are appropriate, okay? So the first thing I want to do is just kind of bring like a couple of color trends to your attention. So for 2022, the Pantone color, I'll put it right here. It's not light blue and it's not like a navy blue. It's kind of like a mixture. And I think that that color is really, really, really beautiful. And as a matter of fact, I believe that I have a head wrap that color. The next one is the color that I am wearing is considered light purple or lilac. I absolutely love this color and I do have another dress in this color, okay? The next one is going to be mint or light green. I do have a head wrap, I do have a Leo and Lynn dress, and then I think I have a sweater set, and then I also have a sweater from Anna Other Stories, okay? So those are kind of like some of the colors that are going to be really popular. Like I was on Zara and I was on a UK based site and they had an entire section dedicated to mint green. And then if you go on Zara's website, which we'll get into one of the trends, they had a plethora of pink and green. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The very first trend that I will not be participating in, and I know this is going to be a very unpopular opinion because right now, if you go on YouTube, if you go on Instagram, you will actually see people doing um, comparisons and which one is more comfortable, which one is you know suited better for this style and for this style. So the very first one is going to be platform heels. I'm not talking about like the inch platform, maybe a two inch platform. I'm talking about the Valentino and the Versace um, pumps and sandals that they're trying to pass off as regular shoes. Okay. And I know, like I said, this is getting ready to be a very unpopular, unpopular opinion. It may even be rude to some people, but for me personally, this is giving me, and I've heard someone actually refer to it as like brats, a, like a brats vibe. This very much to me is giving stripper vibes. Okay. I know that's very rude to say, but I just feel like some trends or some items, some items of clothing need to stay where they are okay and this goes with the exact same thing with the whole pvc in the clear shoe okay when you see a platform of that magnitude on a woman i don't care who you are your first reaction is going to be stripper to me it just kind of seems like again a very unpopular opinion and it might be very rude to say but this is my opinion but it just kind of seems like because I see beautiful women wearing these gorgeous outfits and then I look down at their feet and they have on like the Versace and the um, Valentino pumps. And to me, it just completely destroys the outfit, okay? So that's the very first one. I will not be, particip I will not be participating in that. It just gives me major stripper vibes. And I guess the Bratz comparison would have been a nicer way to say that. But from my understanding, Bratz dolls, because they're dolls and they're made for children, they're not stripper. But to me, whenever I see like that huge of a platform, it just screams stripper to me, okay? The second one is going to be large bags. And I'm not talking about like a Birkin 40. I'm talking about like the large bag that I showed y'all on my um, new, what's new in for luxury handbag. Um, I'm talking about that YSL bag that was literally a strap and then it basically almost came all the way down to the floor. I saw one on Bottega Veneta and I can't remember the other one, but I'm talking about an oversized, oversized bag. Like the bag is absolutely huge, okay? And I will be putting up pictures right here for an example. But I mean, it looks like the bag for a giant. I don't know what you're carrying in that bag. I don't know if you're on the run. I don't know, you know, if you're toting yourself from place to place. 
It's just a really, really large bag. And maybe I can't appreciate it because I'm a very petite woman, but like even someone who has a bigger frame than I do, like someone maybe like Beyonce or Serena Williams, or I don't know, but the bag is, I feel like literally you could take that bag and just put yourself in it like as a grown human or just kind of like wrap yourself in it and use it as a blanket. There is no person in the world that needs to be carrying that much with them, okay? Number three, which is something, number three and four, so I'll go ahead and tack them together. It is the ultimate low rise jean and the micro mini, okay? First of all, the ultimate low rise jeans, I am 33. I know a lot of people don't think I am, but I'm 33. Um, so when I was in college, this was absolutely huge. So much to so, so much to say that women were actually buying thongs to like hike up a little bit as part of decoration when their um, jeans were very low rise. I didn't find it flattering then. I didn't find it flattering when, when Paris Hilton and what's her friend? Um, gosh, I can see her face. Nicole, I can't remember her name. I didn't find it cute when they were doing it. I think we need to leave it in the 2000s and keep moving forward. I don't wear pants, but I find high-waisted pants and skirts, as a matter of fact, to be more flattering than low-rise skirts. Um, when it comes to skirts in my closet, I would say about 98% of them are high-rise or high-waisted because it just gives the effect of an hourglass and they are much more flattering. I don't think we need to go back to the days of the juicy on the booty and the pink on the booty and, you know, buying thongs to hike up with your, so your jeans are here and then you have the thongs up here um, and they're like bedazzled or whatever so you can actually see them. Underwear needs to stay under our clothing, okay? The next one, cat suits. And I know uh, my famous black designer, his name is Laquan Swift. Laquan Smith. Now, while these cat suits, I would say probably for the majority of people, like whenever you see someone wearing them, it's like, you know, she has to have the right body frame. She has to have the right body type. I don't believe that's true. I just don't like them in general. Now, I do know that a lot of his do have cutouts. And for me personally, I just don't find them appropriate. It looks like you're a grown up wearing a onesie. I don't care if it's from Versace. I don't care if it's from Gucci. They just, they, I don't like them. It looks like you're wearing a full body stocking, okay? Um, I don't find them very flattering. I don't find them very um, chic. I don't find them very sophisticated. And again, like I said, these are my opinions. And this is a video from someone when it comes to clothing and when it comes to their aesthetic, I am very classic. I am very structured. I don't mind stepping outside of my uh, comfort zone and trying some new trends, but this is not something that I will be trying. I do know a couple of years ago, people were wearing like the bodysuits and cat suits and just literally throwing on a blazer under it and they were leaving the house and they were saying that they were dressed and you weren't. You had on a cat suit with a blazer. That doesn't make it any better. That doesn't make it even more chic. You're still half dressed leaving your house okay the next one which i'm actually quite surprised is still a thing but it is oversized blazers now you are speaking to someone again who is classic i guess you could say classic chic um i wouldn't say modest because y'all know i love backless anything um very structured very classic um but with these oversized blazers i'm 5'2 i'm shaped like a triangle so if I was to wear an oversized blazer, I guess I would feel like even more of a linebacker. So I have broad shoulders and then I have a very thin frame. The whole oversized blazer thing, like I've seen oversized blazers thrown on over slip dresses and it's considered like edgy. I've seen oversized blazers thrown over, you know, a pair of jeans, just like a white tank top or a t-shirt, you know, and just throwing it over the shoulders and it's supposed to be edgy. It's supposed to be fashion forward. It just, to me, it kind of looks like you were playing dress up in either your boyfriend or your brother's or your father's closet and you just decided to leave the house like that. I don't think it's flattering. I think it makes you look even boxier. And truth be told, no woman truly wants to look boxy. So I don't like the over the oversized blazer. And then sometimes they're like tacking on like these huge puff sleeves. So like the drop shoulder and then like they're tacking on like these huge puff sleeves. 
Um, you know, you actually have the ones that sit out like three to four to five inches outside of where the person's shoulder ends. I just don't think that they're flattering, okay? The next one is going to be sequins bags. And I think that this kind of was like fueled even more. Um, I know that there's a revamp of Sex in the City and apparently, uh, what's that woman's name? Jessica, Jessica Sarah Parker. Um, she was wearing like this purple Fendi baguette. So this is just sequins all together and then sequins bags. Okay. Um, I know that Chanel, I know the Chanel 19 has come out with a couple of sequins bags. I know that that one has been reissued. Um, and I also know that they're doing like different renditions of it. They're doing like ombre. Um, and for me, it's not even the price point because it is a luxury bag. So you're going to pay for it, whether or not the sequins came from the dollar store or if they came from, you know, an atelier in Paris. Um, I just don't like the bag. I don't like sequins. I have one sequins, um, dress in my closet and it's black and you can barely tell that it's sequins. Um, I think in even some luxury houses, I think when you start doing full sequins dresses and gowns and tops and pants, to me, it reads very cheap and very undone. Okay. So putting that in a bag for me personally makes it no better. Um, don't get me wrong. I can appreciate the color. The color of that purple Fendi baguette is so deep and rich. It's very beautiful. And then also I have seen some of the ombre renditions of the Fendi baguette for the sequins. The color of the ombre is very beautiful, but I just don't like sequins. Again, you know, this video was, this video is, or I am a person that is very classic when it comes to their clothing. So you're not going to see me with a sequins bag. I have found them styled very beautifully. Monroe Steel does it very beautifully. But for me, it's just a trend that I'm not going to be partaking in. The next one, which has been inappropriate for the past couple of years that it has been on trend, which is bras as tops. Like you heard me say earlier with the low rise jeans, underwear needs to stay under your clothing. Undergarments need to be, need to remain as undergarments. Just because you bought it from Zara and it has a whole bunch of sparkles on it does not mean that it's still not a bra, okay? I don't want to see you in your low rise jeans with your platforms in a bra or a bralette as a lot of people are referring to inappropriate. You do not need to be showing that much skin when you are outside. If you want to wear a bralette in the house, by all means, go right ahead. No judgment there, none whatsoever. And it's not necessarily judgment when you choose to wear it outside of the house. For me, it's just inappropriate. Too much skin. You need to leave something to the imagination. Um, I just... I, I, I don't, the whole bra thing as a top, it's not a top within the title. It's a bra, okay? I know they're trying to change that by making it into a bralette, but it is still a bra, okay? And this, this also goes for the people who want to talk about sheer and bralettes. If your top is completely sheer and you have on a bralette or a bra, that does not make it any better and that does not make it that does not make you even that does not make you that does not make you even more so covered up because you have on a completely sheer top but th then you have on a bra okay and the last trend that i will not be participating in is undone hems and i was mainly seeing this with like the mini skirts and then just like not finishing the hem of mainly like jean mini skirts I just think it looks undone, as simple as that. I don't find this trend, and it comes, you know, you know, it comes and goes. You're always going to have distressed jeans, you're always going to have jeans with cutouts, but the like the hem of the skirt, it's it's got to be done. If you are going for more of like um, an elevated or a chic look, an undone hem is not going to do it for you, okay? Okay, so the first one is going to be not a cat suit, but it's going to be a bodysuit. And I actually find that these work better with my uh, high-waisted pencil skirts when you start talking about putting an outfit together. So bodysuits. And a lot of the bodysuits that I'm seeing, um, 
they're like very not necessarily they're very like ornate they have like puff sleeves they have ruffles they have draping so i i actually already have one it is from miguel coronal i bought that a couple of years ago um it is considered a, a bathing suit but i will be wearing it as a top because it has like these over the top ruffles okay so body suits easy simple you can wear them with shorts pants and skirts okay the next one is going to be sheer clothing. Um, if you have not seen, actually when I started my YouTube channel, this was almost almost a year ago, wow. Um, I have like this full length polka dotted Zara maxi dress and it's completely sheer. Now, you heard me earlier talk about the bralette tops and talk about sheer clothing. I don't have a problem with sheer clothing. However, the undergarments or what you're wearing under the sheer needs to be appropriate. This was a 20 years, I mean, this was about, I would say 2019, this was like maybe 2018, 2019. Dior debuted these beautiful, gorgeous sheer gowns. But what I noticed is that they were styling them with bralettes and boy shorts. So I don't have a problem with sheer clothing. I actually think it can be done very beautifully. But even more so in 2022 on the runways, I mean, I was seeing nipple and areola, okay? I was seeing thongs. And at this point, they're not even boar shorts. They were just like a pair of underwear. So I love, I love the sheer trend when done, when done properly. For instance, whenever I wear that sheer maxi dress, I am fully covered underneath. There is no boy shorts. There is no bralette. It is a full bodycon dress. I belt it and I leave the house. The sheer gives it like some sexy and some like fashion forward. But the bodycon dress under it is still me putting, you know, the Maya spin on it. So I don't have problems with the sheer clothing if you're going to still have the appropriate undergarments, okay? Um, like I said, on the runway, I mean, there were some women who didn't even have on a bralette. Like I said, it was just full nip and full areola, okay? The next one, which if you have not seen any of my videos and this is your first time here, welcome. But I have said it in many of my videos before that I hope this next trend does become a staple or becomes a classic, which this has been on trend for years now. Um, and it is the puff sleeve, it is the voluminous sleeve. Today, my sleeves are not that voluminous, but I do have some blouses where the sleeves are pretty voluminous. You're going to see this all throughout 2022 again. I have no problems with it. My closet is full of them. And at this point it has become an obsession, but I have told myself that I'm going to stop calling it an obsession. And for me, it has become a staple in my closet. Okay. The next one. So in the beginning of the video, I gave you three color trends. So this one is going to be bright colors. Um, you're going to have your neons, which for me is probably not going to be a thing. Um, I love the cobalt blues. I love the magentas. I love the pinks. And that's also going to be um, set up with cohort sets and suits. Um, I probably have, um, as far as like suits are concerned, you're going to see like very bold colors. Of course, you're going to see your classic Chanel in the Chanel-esque or the Chanel um, inspiration suits, but you're also going to see them in bold prints. So I myself probably will not be doing a bold printed suit because for me, that's just a little much. But as far as like the bold, the bold color, like monochrome, I absolutely love that. Um, I probably will do maybe like a pastel one and then probably like a very bold, bright color that I still feel as though that will fit well within my closet, okay? So very bold, bright colors. Um, you're gonna see a lot of reds, a lot of blues, a lot of oranges, and a lot of greens. Like I said to you before, if you go on Zara's website right now, right on top of Spring Essentials, or I think it's right below it, it's a pink and green dedication. It's nothing but pink and green, bright pink, bright green, absolutely gorgeous, okay? Next, which for me is not a trend because when we start talking about summer and spring, that's literally all I am wearing. I could probably say right now I have 10 of these in my closet and I'm looking to get more. It is going to be all white head to toe. And for me, there is nothing more sophisticated than a black melanated woman in an all white look from head to toe. Y'all know for that past several years, not only has the all white look been the clothing, but it is now incorporated with the shoes. And I am someone who used to think that white shoes kind of were like, they felt undone to me, 
but just the way that they are doing things now like i have a pair of all white uh, pearl um, sandals from zara and i think they're absolutely adorable i wore them all summer last year so an all white look for me is not a trend it is a classic because i have many 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 white dresses midi mini and maxi okay okay so i guess i should have incorporated this one in with the bright colors it's going to be suiting white suits of course you're going to have your black suit you're going to have your camel suit you're going to have your uh, navy suits all of the basic colors but again you're going to start seeing very bold colors your yellows your blues your greens your reds and again you're going to start seeing prints now what i have seen on zara which you might start seeing other places is kind of like this emilio pucci it's going to be like these very 70s psychedelic prints while i am not into that i can appreciate the colors and i can appreciate the look okay next is going to be feathers and fringe and i have started seeing this everywhere i mean it has come down to zara and it has come all the and it has come down to lulu's as well as a matter of fact i really saw like this really cute i think it was either green or orange fringe midi dress on lulu.com okay so much for me it's not going to be the um the fringe but it's going to be the feathers if you have not watched i think it was three videos ago my hair talk i had on the sleeper set and it had feathers on it although i will be wearing that just in the house i am in the market for a feather dress uh for me i think i like the feathers more than the fringe it just gives a little bit more of a hint of glamour to me as far as the fringe is concerned i think feathers are a little bit more glamorous okay now as far as the sleeper set is concerned um i saw a lot of you were looking at them and while they are you know very gorgeous very over the top they're also very comfortable but what you might not also know is the feathering on the top and the feathering on the bottom you can actually unsnap those so when it's time for you to wash them the ostrich feathers will not get damaged okay the next one which i think is going to be for my ladies who kind of want to like get an elevated look without the sequence i'm going to call this liquid metal okay this is probably a trend that i would be much more willing to try than sequins. i just don't see myself in the middle of the day let's say at 12 o'clock going to brunch with my husband or with some girlfriends wearing a full sequence look okay but i do see myself in liquid metal so you're going to have your silvers your golds your bronze maybe like a rusted red and probably black okay so i think that that is going to be what someone who doesn't particularly care for sequins i think that is going to be an alternative for them okay the next one is going to be cutouts and like you've heard me say before i absolutely love cutouts i love a backless dress for my wedding my reception dress and my ceremony dress were both backless but they were done with class okay it wasn't so much backless that you could start to see the crack of my butt but it was backless and it did dip low okay but everything was still very tasteful i'm talking about elevated cutouts i have seen some cutouts and cutouts is one of those trends especially for for instance um animal print animal prints can go cheap very quickly okay it's going to be the exact same thing with cutouts but i have seen a lot of design houses be very um intentional with their cutouts i know y'all have seen the cutouts like right here i do have a set like that i know y'all have seen the gauge um 81 top that y'all absolutely love that sold out within like minutes one of the shoulders was cut out so very elevated cutouts i'm not talking about the cutouts that you have like all the way down like the side of someone's dress to like where you can see side thigh and side butt and then they have a cutout here then they have a cutout on the back and then they also have cut up on their arms that is when sometimes you have too many cutouts it can go cheap very quickly okay and the last one which i actually kind of like and it seems like that is what i have been leaning towards while i'm just lounging in the house is going to be resort wear um fee noel if you don't know a black designer if you ever get if you ever get a chance fee noel diaria blue um and who's the other one andrea ayama if you ever get a chance if you're looking for some gorgeous 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 resort wear check them out um diaria blue and um andrea ayama are going to be more of so like your contemporary moderate if you are looking for if you are looking for luxury you're going to have to go see noel okay she's on shop bop she's also on i want to say moda operandi one of her silk catkins is going it's going to cost you they're gorgeous but it is going to cost you okay resort wear 
Um, very flowy dresses, maxi dresses. You have bat wing, column sleeves, all of that. The gorgeous prints, the huge flowers. Um, I just, I love resort wear because it's glamorous and comfortable at the same time. And I kind of feel like the liquid metal, the resort wear and the sequins, I kind of feel like those are trending or they're going to be trending for a couple of seasons because we are, st even though we are still dealing with COVID, we are now just getting out and trying or continuing to live our lives. People are getting out more. People are traveling more. People want to be seen. I mean, you know, we've been locked up or we were on lockdown for a good bit of a year and for some even more than that. Um, I kind of feel like those trends are stemming from just kind of being cooped up, okay? But the last one is resort wear. So those are all the trends that I have for you from 2022. Let me know in the comments what trends you will not be trying and what you will be trying. And let me know if I missed anything. I feel like those are the trends um, most worth mentioning. Of course, within all of your four seasons, you are going to have micro trends. But for 2022, those are the trend colors and those are the trends. I just want to remind you that here on YouTube, I do upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And of course, right here, I'll put my Instagram handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, you guys. Bye.